Okay, so I did a board clear. All I've done is just kind of put the money market graph back up. So if you want to kind of just jot that down, what we're going to go into now are the kind of the short run money supply changes. Uh, again, short run, really poor phrasing probably on my part. By short run, I mean these are kind of more rapid changes. This is meant to change the money supply um, in, in some cases daily um, or at least very rapidly. Um, so that's kind of uh, what I mean by, by short run money, change, uh, money supply changes. These are meant to change the money supply quickly. Now this is important because remember we said money demand changes every single day. The Federal Reserve cannot rely on changing the federal funds rate to kind of counteract money demands daily changes. Uh, by the time all of those transactions happen, um, who knows what happened with money demand. So money demand going up some days, down some days, it volleys all over the place, which again causes a lot of volatility in that interest rate. And that's something that the Federal Reserve definitely doesn't want to have. They don't want to have volatility in the interest rate. They have that targeted amount. So they need something that could relatively quickly counteract that money, money demand change, they need to change money supply quickly uh, and not have to rely on all of our transactions going through society and however long that would take before we see that impact. So I'm going to give you kind of, we'll start with kind of the most common and then we'll have one that's far less common, although the news today well, wouldn't make you think that. Um, so our most common kind of like short run, quick everyday changes are those FOMC actions. I think formally we call them operations, but whatever. So uh, FOMC actions or FOMC operations. Um, this was, remember, our second tier of the Federal Reserve, Federal Open Market Committee. So the Federal Open Market Committee, I mentioned this last time, is responsible for the buying and selling of those government bonds. And they can do this any day that the bond market is open. Um, and actually in today's online world, you can do it any day you want, the transaction just won't process until the next time the market is open. Um, but they do still have that information available to them, so it does give them an idea of, of what you know, is needed to do on a daily measure to kind of counteract that money demand. There are two things that the FOMC can do. They can either buy bonds or sell bonds. Um, I don't think I've given a definition for bonds, although I've mentioned it several times, so let me just do that really quick. A government bond, and that's what, again, I'm referring to here, a government bond is an IOU issued from the U.S. Treasury. An IOU issued from the U.S. Treasury. That's all a bond is. Um, a bond effectively is the government taking out a loan from consumers. Um, and these bonds pay an interest rate back. Um, right now that interest rate is really low, um, but so is any other kind of savings account or anything like that. Um, so they, they pay uh, an interest rate back. Uh, I'll look up at the end of this one. I'll look up the current rate. I don't know it off the top of my head. So every day the Federal Reserve can jump into these bond markets and they can buy bonds um, from society, from consumers that have matured. Um, when the bond matures, you have the option to sell it back or to reinvest it. They can sell bonds from the Treasury to consumers. Um, there are bonds that are maturing all the time. Um, so they always have access to buy bonds back um, and, and kind of cash those in. Um, they typically, you can, um, you know, as a consumer, you can sell off, the Federal Reserve can buy a bond that hasn't matured. There usually is a fee for that though. So um, there might be some kind of percent penalty, some, something along those lines, but that is an option as well. So, um, so we want to know how does each of these impact? So I've made another silly little thing because I think this, little, this helps. So I will be the Federal Reserve. I have a bond here, I'll come up. U.S. Treasury bond, I made it for a million dollars, just why not, that's kind of fun. Um, let me see, do we actually have money? Probably not, I had a dollar the other day, oh good, I still do have it. I have three dollars, 
and a five in there too. I have eight whole bucks to my name. That's pretty great. So I'm going to put this cash here for society. So I'm the Federal Reserve. <laughs> there it is. See, it's three dollars. I'm going to be the Federal Reserve and I'm going to take my first action. I'm like, hey, I have a bond right here. Who would like this bond? It's it's nice. It's pretty. Uh, well, it's more not pretty. It's more of unit utilitarian. How do you say it? It's minimalist. There we go. Um, it's nice, pretty. Who wants it? Oh, someone in society wants it. So I'm the Federal Reserve. I will come over here and I will sell this bond to someone in society. So they now have it, and what do I do? I effectively take their money, and I put it in my pocket. I put it in our vault. It is now stored away, which means it is not used for transactions any longer. It is just, it's gone. We don't see it anywhere. You can't use this bond for a transaction. Some of you might have bonds. Um, like old school ones actually were paper. So like if you had like a grandparent or something who got you a savings bond for when you were born and it's just in a safety deposit box. Some of you actually may have old school paper ones. Now they're electronic, but that's okay. Um, so like uh, you can't take that and go buy anything with it. So this isn't going to create any transactions. What effectively happened when the Federal Reserve sold that bond? So me as the Federal Reserve, I sold that bond. I effectively took money out of society, and that was instant. That was immediate. I took that money. So when the Federal Reserve sells bonds, money supply falls, right, or shifts to the left. So I'm just going to show that because I did a, a rise on the other graph. So I'm going to just show that one right here. Um, so again, I had that money market one right that we started with. And if money supply falls, that means the actual quantity of money is less. I pulled it out of society. There's Q2. And I would have some MS2, right? A leftward shift. So why would the Federal Reserve do this? Well, if they need to put pressure on the interest rate to rise, because you'll notice that that new intersection between money supply and money demand right here, it's causing the interest rate to go up. Okay, so let's kind of go to the other one, buy bonds. This isn't going to be you know, a shock. So now again, I will be the Federal Reserve, and right, I have all of this cash in my vault here, like $3. Um, and I can look out to society and be like, hey, does anyone out there have any bonds that you know, you're know you done with? You're ready to sell? Because um, I'm looking to buy. Federal Reserve, looking to buy the bond. And then, oh, great, you have one. Perfect. So someone comes over here and is like, I got this bond. I got this bond. Again, this is so much better with people in the room. I don't have to play both roles. I've got this bond. And then I'll come over as the Federal Reserve and be like, oh, perfect. I'll buy that from you. Here's some money. There goes the bond. We'll store that in our vault. And what happened? Immediately, money put into society. Again, that was rapid. That person go spend that cash right now. So whenever the Federal Reserve buys bonds, money supply rises, or again, shifts right. These transactions happen every day. In fact, actually, some days, both of them are happening. Right? The money demand's bouncing everywhere. The Federal Reserve says, we need to sell some bonds off. Okay, now we need to buy some bonds off. We got to keep the interest rate constant. So these are going to happen every day. It also gives us indication, because a lot of people hear on the news, hey, the Federal Reserve is, um, lately, what have we been hearing? Lowering the interest rate. They've been pushing it down, pushing it down, pushing it down, pushing it down. This is actually how. Um, this has been their really, you know, their short-term kind of ideas. They've been going out there and buying bonds, buying bonds, buying bonds. And we actually can see that Federal Reserve action. Um, we saw this a lot, by the way, too, with the, the Great Recession. So like 2006 through really about 2015, the Federal Reserve was just buying bonds in mass. Um, all right, so QM2, R... Money demand, and I'll just start it kind of like here just so I can do a lot. Money supply, let's just say some arbitrary interest rate, which again, probably is too high really my graph, but that's okay. So um, so what has the Federal Reserve been doing lately? Again, what did they do between you know 
2006 to let's call it let's call it 2015. They were constantly buying bonds. And then again, we are seeing this in the news again lately, right? We've seen this, um, you know, 2020, uh, January of 2020 to today. We've been seeing the Federal Reserve buying bonds, buying bonds, buying bonds, and keep putting money into society. And as they keep putting money into society, look what keeps happening to the interest rate. R2, R3. They're doing that to push that interest rate down. And again, that's what we've seen on the news. Um, really recently, um, especially, they've been saying, we want that interest rate getting kind of close to zero. That also opens up our, our next short run kind of thing here. And that's the idea of quantitative easing. Again, super uncreative with our abbreviations, QE, quantitative easing. Quantitative easing occurs when the Federal Reserve buys financial assets as a method of lowering the interest rate. When the Federal Reserve buys financial assets as a method of lowering the interest rate. Okay, so again, this is something our book does such a horrible job with. It gets... I. I think it gets a paragraph and a half or something like that. Um, it doesn't get a lot. Um, so it, it just gives it a little bit of time. This is That definition was really horrible um, because there's just so much more to it. But that's the gist of it. So let me give you a couple of asterisks of when we are kind of typically looking at seeing quantitative easing. Um, first of all, the Federal Reserve really is only going to do quantitative easing when the interest rate is already pushed really close to zero through bond purchases. So bond purchases are the first kind of, that's what they want to do first. This is, well, maybe there's not enough bonds. Maybe there's too much pressure for it to move away from zero, whatever. This is whenever bond push, uh, bond purchases have already pushed the interest rate really low. They need to get it to go lower. It's very hard to you know keep forcing it down when maybe money demand is, is starting to rise. Um, so it tends to be when the interest rate is already pretty close to zero. Um, another little asterisk, this tends to be in massive amounts. We're talking billions of dollars at once, hundreds of billions of dollars at once. Um, so this is a huge money dump into society. Kind of the third asterisk, what do we mean by financial assets? Um, of course, things like bonds could be tied into it, but what they're probably buying are mortgages. Um, and they're not just buying one or two or three mortgages. They're buying what we call a mortgage block. Banks will buy and sell mortgages with a lot of frequency. Um, my, with my first house, my uh, mortgage was sold three times. And I'm in my second house now, and we just moved in like two years ago, um, and my mortgage has already been sold once. Um, so banks will sell these mortgages to each other, um, especially if you go to a small bank to get your mortgage. They're going to sell it to a big bank just so they can get the money freed up and clear right away. Um, the big bank has incentive to buy the mortgage because they don't have to do anything. They are The underwriting's already been done. The credit checks have already been done. Um, all they have to do is have capital to give to the little bank and patience because they know they're going to get a bigger return over 30 years. So the Federal Reserve can do this as well. They can go um, to some of the big bank, the big mortgage clearing houses, um, Penny Mac, um, Bank of America is one of them, uh, Freddie Mac, you know, all of these, and they can say, we're gonna buy a bulk of, uh, of mortgages at once, um, you know, $500 billion. As soon as the bank has that money, again, it's just money that's kind of burning a hole in their pocket. The bank wants to, to loan that out right away. So this is a massive, massive infusion of money in society. Um, and like I said, I wish, again, it was, I wish we had more 
time for some of that money and banking concepts because this is uh, something that we could get a lot more detail on. Uh, I'll, I'll touch on a little bit more at the start of our next class, but this ended our class, so I'll pick up there. We'll chuck it on the graph. Mm -hmm.